The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the P Power Trading Hour, with your host, David White. Now, the author of The Path of Least Resistance and The Tech Insider, David White. Good afternoon, traders. It is a beautiful Monday, June 4th down here. Everybody got through uh, the long weekend last weekend and this weekend. And I noticed uh, lots of families uh, driving down the highway and across the causeway today. Uh, I actually talked to a friend of mine who'd been uh, on vacation for nine days with his family. I asked him if they were able to uh, spend the whole nine days without choking each other like the Simpsons. Uh, so far, no report other than he got back all in one piece. But uh, nine days at the lake, uh, probably a big deal for a family, especially kids getting to be 16 years old. Um, and uh, they were always, you know, I don't know, always rambunctious, let me put it that way. A couple of boys and a girl. So I'll, uh, I'll probably be getting the full report on my way home tonight. He'll probably give me a ring, let me know what happened. But uh, always a good time to do a little on Golden Pond. Uh, but a lot of vacations uh, pretty much wrapping up on Sunday. A lot of people were gone last week on extended vacations. Uh, but today is National Barefoot Day. If you live near or a beach or a park, go for a walk and enjoy the feeling of the sand between your toes. Maybe the grass. Hopefully nothing else. Maybe it's just mud. Just keep telling yourself, I just stepped in mud. Not nothing any it couldn't be anything else, but uh no, we're just not too far from a beach when I have time. I like to uh, head on out out to the beach and walk up and down the beach before I head home. Unfortunately, for some reason, the traffic has really changed, and now I don't have as much time to do that, but uh well, I'll have to think about it uh We were talking in the den, and one of the things that uh, we've been talking about, and Tom did his tick presentation, is how different the tick numbers can be from system to system. Uh, most people, uh, if you know about the tick, it is how many how many stocks in the last uh, reporting period, and we'll get to that in a second, uh, were on higher ticks or lower ticks. Uh, normally, the uh, thing you want to look at uh, is, if you can, is the New York Stock Exchange ticks. Uh, the reason why is if you are looking at a system that looks at all the ECNs, uh, those may report back uh, highs and lows may be a little bit delayed. You're really looking for the highest tick uh, at a particular second. And if uh, you don't just have the New York Stock Exchange uh, up and down, uh, just even the slight uh, differentiations between uh, electronic commerce networks and the floor of the NYSE are enough to bring the uh, tick highs and down, uh, lows down a little bit, uh, but at the same time it can skew them higher or lower uh, because, of course, uh, not all those systems are going to be aligned to the microsecond, and that's really what you want. And also, some systems uh, will have uh, tend to have higher or lower ones uh, in the reporting periods. That is. Do they update the tick every second, every half second, every 30 seconds? Uh, and if they're just taking a snapshot every 30 seconds, that tick may have passed or gone higher or lower. Now, normally it's not a huge deal, uh, but we were talking in here what we saw today. My system's reporting like, uh, I think it was 210 or 220. Uh, some people were seeing 12, or excuse me, 12. 10, 1220. Some were seeing uh, 1240. Uh, got one report in the den as high as 1340. And that can just be uh, differentiations. Uh, so when you look at your tick, you got to know whether or not you're competing uh, and what your tick is and how it's done. But normally you want to do apples to apples. If you watch your data feed, you want to be watching how that actually does come in. Uh, we didn't see anything that I thought would be uh, outrageous out here. Uh, S&P is flat today, uh, off just about one point. Same with the NASDAQ. Uh, Dow's off about 38 points. When we look at the gold, it's uh, off about two bucks. Uh, we also uh, are looking at uh, crude up about 92 cents. Uh, probably not a bad day. I've been kind of waiting uh, to see whether or not... Uh, 
uh, I should fill up my tank, but I think I'll probably do it on the way home today. Uh, we might see kind of a crash. I noticed they raised prices uh, before the weekend here, which I thought was uh, especially into a uh, market that was headed much lower for crude. A little interesting, but uh, probably going to get, uh, I think I saw a 322 or 323 on the way in, so I'll probably fill up on my way back home. Uh, tonight, but uh, kind of interesting. But anyway, uh, the ins and outs of the tick. And as uh, Nick in Nashua says, my tick is better than your tick. Uh, but it is um, it is something you need to get used to. Know that it is a little bit fungible, and depending on your system and how it's reported, you may not get the highest tick of other as others. Normally, if I can get it, I want to see just the floor traded tick. Uh, of the New York Stock Exchange, which is one of the few times I like that better than everything else. And that's just because truly I think it's done, especially if you, uh, if you, uh, listen to Tom repeat at night, it is one of the, uh, a few ones that really works well, uh, the smaller it is. I noticed uh, on the tick that very few people ever use the NASDAQ tick. Uh, and that's why, uh, because, of course, it is a more distributed system, too. And it's very hard to get those extreme ticks that you can still get on a floor-traded uh, stock like the New York Stock Exchange ones. Uh, so you've got, uh, I think there's like uh, 2,750 stocks in that tick index uh, somewhere around in there, and of course, uh, when you get highs of uh, fourteen or fifteen hundred of them all down ticking, i.e., uh, had a, a at least a penny higher price uh, a, on the last tick than on this tick, uh, gives you a pretty good indication that you've hit some kind of uh, cataclysmic uh, move. I don't suspect uh, that we've hit that tick. We've had a few of them in the fourteen hundreds uh, over the last. Uh, I don't know, a week, 10 days. None of them have been good enough to actually show any capitulation in the marketplace. We continue to have a, a rolling auction down. Uh, we're off about two points on the S&P now. I suspect uh, that it's going to take uh, something of that line, or we're going to have uh, what I've heard called the paper cut stock market, which is every day, uh, you just uh, like a paper cut, it just continues to bleed. You can't read, not a whole lot. But you just can't ever get it to stop. So we're looking for, um, uh, <laughs> uh, we had a good question in the den, what flash crashes look like on the uh, tick. And, you know, I guess the thing to do would be go back and look at the tick on, uh, was it May 6th of two years ago for the flash crash and actually look at it. Um, there were so many systems down that day, though. Uh, that my guess is that half the stocks weren't actually trading, uh, that most of the guys had walked away. Um, might have to go back and take a look and see what that uh, actually did look like. Um, yeah, we got uh, we got some stuff, but uh, yeah, it's uh, right now uh, on uh, Friday. I think we were talking on the show, and then later on in the uh, Tech Insider Hour, uh, if you build black boxes. Uh, and these are trading systems. Most of them are based around a few things that most people use, i.e. trying to duplicate what the majority of traders are going to do out there. Uh, below uh, about 1286 uh, is a sell signal for most black box companies uh, that it is a danger signal. So if they had long positions, even if they'd been long for a long time, uh, probably ready to start putting on some selling positions. Uh, what we do have is the end of fund buying today. So uh, uh, normally you've got the last two, three days of the month and the first two days of the, of the, of the month. I suspect that if we've got any fund buying, uh, it's probably going to be exhausted by today or first thing in the morning. Uh, this is probably about as strong as you can expect it. Doesn't mean we won't get a bounce out of here anyway. Uh, probably fairly extended uh, oversold condition. Uh, but uh, what we see in the next bounce is going to tell us whether or not uh, we set up more ABCs down. Uh, I would suspect the next level of support uh, and our decent support is probably down around uh, 1225 on the S&P cash anyway. Uh, in the news, uh, what are we going to do? Uh, I don't know. A lot of people have talked about it. It's kind of popped up here and there. Uh, Flame is the newest uh, malware. Uh, direct from, uh, if you believe the reports, directly from Israel and the United States. Uh, 
They hired some of the best programmers in the world, apparently, uh, to make some of the best malware in the world uh, to go after Iranian nuclear production and other production in uh, Iran. Uh, I think I reported about a month ago that Iran's actually getting rid of the entire Internet in their country. Apparently, this has been so successful that it's blown up hundreds, if not thousands, of their uh, uh, gas centrifuges uh, to make nuclear weapons. What you do is actually uh, uh, spin uh, long aluminum tubes uh, full of gas uh, long enough, and eventually the heavier uh, uranium will get uh, toward the ends. You let a little of it out. You keep doing that over and over and over again uh, in a uh, fashion to finally get the most uranium-238. You can, a high concentration, good enough for a warhead. Uh, what they did with uh, SuxNet, which is the previous one, uh, was uh, target those controllers uh, made by Siemens to actually uh, change the rate of the, uh, the these uh, huge long tubes. And I understand there's something like 25 foot long uh, aluminum tubes that have to be built uh, to a very high quality or they'll break and fly all over the place. So what they did was make sure that the motors that control those, uh, that are controlled by a computer from Siemens, uh, that they could actually get to that uh, with the SuxNet worm. Now Flame is a little bit different. Um, it is a malware product that was designed uh, as a spyware product. And what they found out was that <laughs> this particular one, uh, very devilishly clever, will turn on a microphone. So literally the, anyone that had a microphone hooked to their computer in anywhere in Iran, pretty much, uh, they could listen to. So I suspect that the, they've been listening to everybody talk in all of their offices for a while. Uh, the reason I bring this up is Microsoft gives a thing called certificates, uh, and they're supposed to be trusted out there. What, is, what uh, this has shown is a huge gap in Microsoft's uh, uh, ability to issue trusted certificates. Uh, there was, if you noticed on Saturday, if you have automatic updates uh, put on, uh, that Microsoft actually put up an update to uh, plug this particular hole. Uh, but basically it said it was a trusted program from Microsoft, uh, and that's why it never showed up in any of the uh, malware screeners or uh, anti-malware uh, products out there, as everybody suspected or thought that it was a Microsoft product. And most of these controllers work on some level of Microsoft Windows over time. Um, anyway, Flame uh, varies probably on about half of all Iranian computers. And probably the most, uh, or probably the thing I'm saying is you better back up your computers. Because uh, normally uh, it's just bad when one of these things comes out. But what it does mean is that, that uh, people that have been... Uh, let me put it this way, amateurs are now going to have the definitive guide to hack any computer out there with Windows on it. Uh, Flame is the blueprint. They'll go through it line by line, figure out how it works. It's going to be very interesting. We'll be back in a minute. It's that time of year again, and the Great Panther Silver Summer Silver Giveaway is back. Every day in June, Monday through Friday, we'll be giving away a Great Panther Silver 1-ounce silver bar, and all you have to do to enter is visit the front page of TFNN.com and fill out your entry. Great Panther Silver and TFNN wishing you a great start to the summer. Sign up today to have a chance to win a 1-ounce silver bar during the Great Panther Silver Summer Silver Giveaway the whole month of June at TFNN.com. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you gain access to each host charts and computer screen as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kate Stalter, Dave White, Larry Pesavento, or Victor Jones, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV yet, then visit TFNN.com today to see what you're missing. 
You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain and this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Stock market corrections are the number one reason that a buy-and-hold investment strategy produces the poorest results, and I have 73 years of data that proves it. Now, the good thing about economic difficult times is that the worst economy can produce the best rewards in the shortest period of time. In fact, during the last 130 years, 61% of that time period has been spent in recession. And if you're one of the 70% of American households relying on their 401ks and IRAs for retirement, you need the single strategy that is bulletproof against the turmoil of our stock markets. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com under breaking news, click on success is a numbers game to receive this must-have free report. This bulletproof strategy may be days away from giving the next signal. Don't neglect your retirement and don't neglect this signal. If you're even a little bit interested in accumulating wealth, providing a better life for you and your family, then go to TFNN.com to order your free copy of success is a numbers game today. Implement the disciplines contained in this report and success will be yours for the taking. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Anyway, uh, more on the news out there. Microsoft uh, today has announced an upcoming improvement to the Xbox 360. It allows you to search for movies and video content by simply calling out a few simple phrases. Uh, so this is kind of an audio uh, adjunct to their already kinetic product. Um, what's going on today, actually starting tomorrow, there's some pre uh, press conferences today for E3, which is kind of the computer graphics uh, convention. Uh, each year at this time, uh, they kind of show off a lot of stuff that they'll be coming out next fall. Uh, a lot of this stuff, in fact, uh, a lot of the games now have become much uh, bigger than uh, movies with uh, revenues over a billion dollars uh, per title. So it, uh, it's becoming very big business. Uh, Microsoft is now the undisputed uh, leader uh, with uh, the Xbox being the number one platform. Uh, last couple of months, they've really been able to blow them out guess it's become the de facto product over the Wii and some of the other ones out there. But the volume that they've been shipping, uh, well in excess of uh, the rest of them for the last six months. Uh, and now uh, pretty much uh, the leader in set-top boxes for uh, gaming. Of course, the, the rumored Xbox 720 coming out this fall. Uh, probably going to hear more about that in the next couple of days. Uh, but, uh, you know, they're going to, they've already talked today about rolling out, uh, their version of a music service like iTunes. Uh, and they've got one other thing that they're showing today. It's called Smart Glass, uh, with the, uh, with uh, Xbox. And that's going to be able to, uh, control 
or send uh, the video and uh, ancillary information about what's on your TV to your handheld device. So uh, your smartphone uh, over to your computer, you're going to be able to send things uh, and basically uh, network uh, your Xbox with your smartphone and your uh, actual uh, computer uh, all together. So you can kind of decide to watch something on your uh, smartphone and then send it to the Xbox or watch it on the Xbox and send it to the computer or the smartphone. It's going to be kind of interesting. Anyway, it's called Smart Glass technology. Probably the biggest thing uh, so far that's been announced out there, along with something I've been saying already, which is uh, that Internet Explorer will be uh, making its way to Xbox 360 sometime this fall uh, with a kinetic interface along with the uh, 720 version of... Uh, uh, pretty much uh, the uh, uh, next version of Xbox coming out this fall. Uh, at the same time, uh, NVIDIA is saying that uh, uh, they should be able, within about the next 18 months, to put in the uh, speed of the current Xbox 360 in handheld devices at the kind of speed uh, that uh, with our in power draws that the current chips are using today. Um, we talked early on and even had uh, uh, some people on from the uh, SPICA uh, and uh, about uh, basically uh, MF Global. Uh, JP Morgan, kind of very quietly under the radar, I haven't seen anybody really bring it up, uh, actually did write a cut a $600 million check to the MF Global trustee. Uh, and uh, this was the money that had gone over into England. Uh, not exactly sure why. Uh, that took so long for them to figure out that they uh, uh, didn't have it, but I guess they probably earned interest on it all that time, uh, but uh, did uh, actually write a check apparently on Friday. Uh, so at least some of that $1.6 billion that's out uh, running around, about a third of it uh, might find its way back to consumers if we can keep the uh, fingers of uh, off, uh, the uh, people. Um, oh, actually, someone's got a nice part of this article popped up here. Uh, 1.6 million shortfall includes 700 million stuck in the UK, of which they got 600 million back, according to the article I read. So, kind of interesting. Uh, Iraqi oil uh, is really starting to produce a whole lot of oil. I uh, saw a pretty good piece about uh, the uh, the one really nice part of Iraq, and that's the Kurdish regions up north, uh, where they've been pumping oil for uh, about the last year very significantly. The airport is uh, as good as any in the Mideast right now. Uh, they've cleaned it up, made it, uh, you know, hotels, everything else opening up. Uh, so some of that money is actually finding its way into the country, uh, especially in the northern region. Uh, overall, there's been a 20% jump in exports this year to new, uh, nearly 2.5 million barrels of oil a day, uh, making Iraq one of the premier producers in OPEC. Uh, in the uh, first, uh, actually, in about 22 years. So uh, not only is uh, you know, Iraq started to come around, they're actually uh, producing a lot of oil and a lot of money, and especially in the northern regions, uh, things are doing extremely well. We'll be back in a minute, uh, try to finish up some news and get into some stocks. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter the gold report with over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week in addition to covering the xau hui gld and dollar the gold report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market for your 30-day free trial to tom o'brien's gold report log on to tfnn.com today don't miss out on this great offer act now
If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Price Leaders, has just launched, and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers, where she focuses on small-cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low-priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs. These newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by Direction Shares. To learn more about tactical tools for the sophisticated active investor, hit the Direction Shares banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we come back, uh, going to go to Arms Holdings. Um, their CEO came out today and basically saying that uh, by the end of 2013, there'll be the 20 nanometer uh, production specs for their designs. Uh, the problem that I see with this comment is that they've got to have some fab capable of actually building it. Uh, Intel apparently has been the only company actually continuing uh, to go after uh, smaller and smaller designs. Uh, right now, their current chips are going to be 22 and 24 nanometer uh, designs. Uh, right now, Arms Holdings, I, I would say probably almost all their stuff, is 32 nanometer. Uh, the smaller and smaller you get, the less power you use, which is, of course, uh, the thing that uh, all these smartphones and handheld and tablets need is long battery life. Uh, you know, using 32 nanometer uh, opposed to uh, 20 nanometer should save them about 35% of the power uh, for the same chip. My guess is that uh, chips always have to get faster, so maybe they'll be able to actually get 35% faster with the same battery life. Uh, but, uh, but it's kind of the thing that everybody's driving for. Um, actually, uh, at the end of 2013, Intel says they're going to be at 14 nanometers. So it looks like, uh, and continues to look like, Intel has got the design and manufacturing prowess to save almost a full year and a half 
ahead of everybody else in the design field. Uh, now that pretty much everybody relies on a couple of different fabs to actually build their stuff, uh, it's hard for those companies to justify uh, building uh, and uh, making a fab uh, where you know they don't have the kind of margins, uh, you know, low margin business building uh, chips for other people. S certainly decent margins, but uh, nowhere close to the 65 percent margins that Intel makes building their own uh, chips. Um, 3D chips are actually already. I had a question in the den. Are already coming online in that some of these new Ivy Bridge uh, chips are going to have stacked uh, uh, 3D transistors in them. So I guess part of the answer is already and now uh, that uh, they're already stacking uh, at least one level of transistors in some of the regions on that Ivy, Bri uh, Ivy Bridge version, which is uh, the third version of the uh, iCore Duo chips that uh, have just recently shipped in the last couple of weeks. Uh, I think it's a fairly smaller or minor part of the chip that actually has it. Uh, so uh, probably not as much as the next generation uh, where they're looking at doing three, four, five levels of stacking IC chips to bring uh, the distance down uh, because, uh, you know, d basically the whole thing is just getting uh, the uh, distance from one transistor, uh, at least on one side of the chip, to the uh, farthest transistor on the other side of the chip uh, as small as possible and uh, either stacking them and making them smaller are two different ways of doing it. Uh, probably going to use all of the above to actually do it. Uh, ARM's processors, uh, very nice designs, uh, but you always have to send the chip out to someone else to make, uh, and it's probably going to be the weakness for them, although uh, it is inexpensive. Uh, Groupon, uh, you know, anybody that's listened to us for a while, uh, Tom and I warned everybody about Groupon at the beginning. Uh, Groupon uh, lockup was up on Friday. They're down another seven, almost seven percent or eight percent today. Uh, continue watching this one. I don't know when it's going to actually stop, uh, but my guess is when people can quit shorting it. Uh, you can actually short this stock, I think, as a retail investor. Uh, for a long time, uh, all the uh, st shares had already been locked up by hedge funds and willing to pay in advance a, a premium anywhere from 10 to 30 percent uh, to get short when this thing uh, actually came out. Uh, so uh, one other question was uh, leakage and crosstalk. Um, maybe that's uh, why Intel hasn't uh, decided to actually use this extensively. Uh, but uh, don't know the answer on that other than Intel is shipping chips with it already. Uh, probably do a little bit more research on that. Anyway, Groupon, the last one, we've got one IPO this week uh, coming out. I didn't even bother looking at it. It's for $35 million. It's some Chinese company. Uh, my guess is it's going to be a sham. Uh, I didn't even spend any time looking at it. Uh, I think that uh, Facebook has probably put the whammy on anybody releasing any new IPOs for a while. Nothing this week. There's a few things out there that uh, are in the uh, 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 roadshow, and uh, the only one that I know of that they still are going to try to push out is uh, Kayak, and that one is as problematic as Groupon. So uh, watch for all these IPOs. I don't really see that there's a whole lot out there now. Uh, but uh, still a few trying to be pushed through. I uh, was going to go through uh, some uh, stocks here as soon as I can get my charts up. Uh, one was Microsoft. And I can't remember if it was uh, Nancy. This is a gal from uh, Seattle was calling about Microsoft and what she should be waiting for. Uh, it actually has gotten right into what you wanted to look at. I think the market side of this is going to be problematic, uh, but uh, I think you probably can't find a better looking chart out there right now uh, than Microsoft. Uh, it had done exactly what everybody wanted to do. Uh, the Wyckoff pattern, which has been around since the 1920s, is a bust out or breakout uh, above previous highs on heavier volume. You had that on the 20th of January. This thing took off like a rocket on 166 million shares. Uh, on that 20th of January, it's gone up as high as $32.95. Uh, it's come back on uh, lighter energy. Uh, what we have now is uh, 
taking that gap on and getting into that gap that had 166 million shares. Uh, on Friday, uh, we had uh, 56 million shares. Uh, today, we're probably going to do 45 million shares or less. Uh, so you really have to think that uh, uh, if you are looking for a bounce, and I suspect that the market uh, might have a little bounce in it, um, but uh, certainly Microsoft, one of the strongest looking charts out here, uh, certainly your risk and reward is out there. Uh, if uh, the gal from, I think it was from Seattle, it was Spokane, uh, was calling me about it, uh, maybe she'll want to call back in and uh, talk about uh, Microsoft, but this is exactly uh, what we were looking for, which is to have come back and at least fill most or part of that gap out there. Uh, about 25% uh, of a stock's movement is the stock itself, 25% is the sector, and 50% is the market. Right now, though, uh, this may be the best uh, supported stock in the market and also one that maybe goes nowhere. Um, you really got to have the market somehow uh, actually decide to uh, complete this. And, uh, in fact, what I want to do right now is take a look at the volume with 30 minutes left uh, for uh, the market. We've got 3.3 billion shares, not a whole lot for coming back down. Uh, we're off almost four points on the S&P. Uh, 3. Point, you know, 3.3, 3.4 billion shares on the consolidated tape. That includes all stocks traded that are listed on the New York Stock Exchange, but not physically traded across the floor. So ECNs, anybody, high frequency traders, three point, yeah, you know, it's probably going to put us in at about 4.2 billion uh, at the end of the day. And I don't know, we got what uh, 18 minutes? Is that right? Uh, 28 minutes. So, you know, we're basically looking at 18 minutes. We're looking at probably the light volume. Uh, might get a bounce out of this. We'd certainly want to see some kind of strength or a sign of strength out here. But I continue thinking that this market, until it gets some kind of resolution uh, from Europe, is a pepper cut. And that's you're going to see these 3 and 4 and 10 point uh, down days until we get to some kind of crisis level. Uh, and see some kind of capitulation. I'm probably long-term one of the biggest bulls here at TFNN, but even I have to say that this is uh, problematic to see these days uh, with lighter volume. Uh, sometimes people call these markets uh, buyer strikes, uh, and that uh, could be it. Uh, again, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648, and we'll discuss your particular stock out there. But uh, Microsoft, one of the uh, best ones out there. And let's see what else we have out here. Yeah. Da da da. da. What do we have? Well, I want to go to some other stocks while we have some time. Uh, and see. Oh. Let's see if I can find my. Yeah, there it is. Uh, ones we've been watching here. Uh, some of the other ones I think are Canary and the Coal Mine. Uh, still need to close above a certain level to be a buy signal yet again. Uh, Alcoa is one of them. You'd think with the extreme low price of energy, this thing would really want to uh, fly. Uh, the uh, date we're looking at is October 4th, $8.45, had 49 million shares that day. Uh, we've gone below it. Let's see what is uh, what we got here, 833. So still not close above it today, uh, but about half the volume, 26 million shares. Uh, is that right today? Uh, about 18, 19 million. Certainly a whole lot saying that this wouldn't be a bad looking stock. Uh, if this thing could dry out here, I wouldn't play it, not uh, with a buck or two uh, to make on the high end. Uh, but pretty good uh, carinary in the coal mine showing that we don't have much lower, but uh, going to continue to see uh, markets like that. Uh, the natural gas uh, ETN, eat, if anybody's actually playing exchange, uh, exchange traded notes anymore uh, on uh, natural gas. Uh, fairly interesting. I haven't had enough time to really f uh, find out what this one is, but one of the better looking charts out here actually uh, in the marketplace, um, exactly what I look for, which is uh, heavy volume down, uh, light volumes up, and then no volume back down. Uh, this one is getting to that uh, low at $2.90 uh, from January 19th. Uh, 620,000 shares, uh, going to do a nice little doji out here on about 199,000 shares. So uh, it makes me think that we might have a little bit more uh, out there going on. Uh, someone brought up IBM, and I haven't had a chance to look at it. Uh, IBM 
still hasn't made its way back into its big gap up. Uh, looking at it uh, on the 20th, the same date, Microsoft, of course, uh, took off a uh, big volume, uh, almost 13 million shares. I'm going to get into it with about 5 million, 6 million shares today uh, into that candle. But still, I'd like this thing to get down into this uh, probably $183 level uh, to see whether or not this thing uh, and how it tests that gap. Microsoft looks a better, like a better chart to me because you know it's in the gap. Uh, your risk reward is probably going to be a little bit better. Uh, Juniper Networks, uh, it's beyond me why the market is slaughtering these uh, uh router manufacturers as much as they are, but uh, the idea, I guess, is there's going to be no more Internet. Uh, but uh, treated like the red-headed stepchild, uh, Juniper out here, $16.67, 13 million shares on October 4th. Uh, so we've gotten down below that. Uh, looks like we're probably going to continue to close lower, and that's why you pretty much in these uh, paper cut kind of markets need these lower uh, lows to actually close back above uh, these lows that they are disintegrating. These things can go uh, along a lot longer than you would like, uh, which is one of the reasons why. Even Netflix, uh, uh, talking about the oinkers out here, not a bad looking stock, but again, uh, let's see what the what we got on this here, eh, uh, 64.19, eh. Yeah, I guess actually it's not as bad. It has uh, closed, or it probably will close back up above its low, the November 30th low out here, 15 million shares, $62.37. Uh, what do we got out here? Yeah, $64. Yeah, it's actually closing back in. Uh, not a bad looking chart e either. The energy uh, on the way up and way back down, uh, just a little bit less. Uh, you know, I, I kind of remember uh, Netflix took off at about 30 bucks, and I keep wondering if it's going to actually auger its way back down in there. Uh, the reason I've always worried about it is whether or not you can actually uh, depend on uh, Internet access uh, with uh, companies like Comcast implementing a, a non-net net, uh, neutrality issue. Uh, are, you know, when it becomes a big enough issue, are they just going to slow down the Internet uh, for video streaming slow enough that it doesn't matter unless you're using uh, the system uh, of your ISP? Both Apple and Google have spent huge amounts of money uh, looking into uh, deploying their own Internet uh, system so that they would have uh, the last mile to the customer's door and on wireless. Uh, I've talked about it a few times. Google has set up the first gigabit Ethernet access uh, in uh, Kansas City, Kansas, as a test bed, uh, trying to encourage uh, businesses to move in there that need high-speed access. Apple has built their own uh, huge, huge mega center in North Maryland uh, that would be perfect for its own Internet access. Uh, my guess is that some of that money that both Google and Apple have is going to go into uh, building their own last mile to the customer so that, uh, much like uh, Western water rights, uh, they just don't cut you off upstream, which I think is the biggest thing that, that uh, Netflix, uh, Google, uh, any of these people that use uh, like YouTube, wireless networks have to worry about. Uh, but uh, Netflix actually not looking too bad down here as we uh, finish up the day. We'll look at the volume when we come back, see how this thing's going to end up. Uh, S&P continues to be off $4.42. Uh, volume, not huge, but uh, again, paper cut market, I think. Got to get the bleeding to stop. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when temporary market spikes move against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the 
the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the advantage of keeping your trades open even when the market temporarily spikes against you. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique short-term binary options that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you gain access to each host charts and computer screen as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kate Stalter, Dave White, Larry Pesavento, or Victor Jones, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV yet, then visit TFNN.com today to see what you're missing. Would you like a personal update from Tom O'Brien as to what equities he's trading and what his daily trading plan is before the market opens each morning? Every market day, Tom O'Brien sends out his daily newsletter, Market Insights, to hundreds of subscribers that rely on his daily recommendations when it comes to navigating these highly volatile markets we're dealing with. As recently as May 21st, Market Insights subscribers closed out all five open positions for a combined profit of over 68% in one day. Profits ranged from 6.5% to over 24%, and all of these trades had been initiated within the previous 30 days. Now is the perfect time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's explosive trading newsletter, Market Insights, an $85 value. Tom breaks down the market each morning with his market take and provides trade recommendations including precise stops and target profit zones, leaving nothing left to guessing. Log on to TFNN.com today and sign up for your two-week free trial. Make sure you're a subscriber the next time Market Insights subscribers close out multiple winning trades. Take action and sign up for your free trial today. You've heard Basil Chapman on the air hosting the Tiger Technician's Hour and always wondered what's behind his powerful Chapman wave. Well, Basil has just announced a one-day online master trader course where he'll explain his Chapman Wave methodology in detail so that you can learn how to chart Basil's one-of-a-kind formation techniques in real time while the market is open. Not only do you get a full-day online master trader course with Basil during live market hours, but by signing up now, you also get a free month of his newsletter, The Opening Call, a $128 value, along with access to his Moving Averages webinar, another $99 value. This online course takes place Friday, June 8th, and will be archived so you can view it as many times as you like for 30 days following the course. Make sure you take advantage of this one-of-a-kind master trader course with Basil Chapman during live market hours by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and reserving your spot today. It's that time of year again, and the Great Panther Silver Summer Silver Giveaway is back. Every day in June, Monday through Friday, we'll be giving away a Great Panther Silver 1-ounce silver bar, and all you have to do to enter is visit the front page of TFNN.com and fill out your entry. Great Panther Silver and TFNN wishing you a great start to the summer. Sign up today to have a chance to win a 1-ounce silver bar during the Great Panther Silver Summer Silver Giveaway the whole month of June at TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator, also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Someone brought up Intel in the den as some of the other ones that are looking kind of like IBM and uh, Microsoft. Uh, I would say Intel's more Microsoft than IBM. Uh, what I'm seeing here is uh, last quote, 2505. Uh, actually, it's going to close back above a, eh, previous lows. So actually, a little bit better uh, looking than uh, you would think. Uh, the previous low out here, this is a, a shorter version of uh, Microsoft, but still not all that bad. May 23rd, $24.92, 61 million shares. Uh, we got, uh, I don't know, what, 35 million, 36 million shares um, already today. So uh, not a bad looking uh, chart out here. Very short term, though. Uh, we only have uh, four days up and four days down on this uh, last little leg back in here. Uh, when you look at uh, support, um, it actually is about $23.05. So we continue to uh, watch that. 
And uh, I don't know. We're going to have to continue um, looking at these, uh, and we'll have to figure it out. Uh, but uh, Juniper Netflix, uh, the Russell was the last one that I was looking at out here. And, uh, you know, like I said, not a lot of volume, but you need a close higher than the low, and especially on this S&P uh, that I'm having somewhat uh, a problem with in that uh, you really need to get uh, that to actually close a little bit higher. Let me see if I can get a quote. Yeah, you got, uh, well, got a nice little pop. Uh, just the last minute or two. Let me see, though, um, what we get in the volume. 3.5 uh, eh, million, uh, 3.5 billion shares on the uh, New York Stock Exchange. So we'll continue uh, watching that. Uh, start, uh, let's see. But uh, anyway, back to the uh, market vectors uh, RSX. Uh, watching, uh, watching that. Um, you know, you had a nice low at $23.62 on May 23rd. Got into it with a little bit less, uh, $6.5 million on Friday. It's going to close back above it. You certainly need it to close back above that uh, $23.62 level. And uh, we'll have to see. I think we've got somebody on the phone, maybe. Nope. Uh, okay, so we'll be checking that out. Uh, SanDisk was another one. I wanted to see how this thing did. And again, this is one of the ones that uh, blew through uh, a high volume, low on lighter volume again today. Uh, again, one of these ones that uh, you just keep seeing this bleeding, uh, and you need a close back into the trading range before you can think about buying these. So uh, I'd still watch that, still look at uh, probably the S&P closing above uh, 1285 at least, and maybe 1295 to get any kind of indication that these things have hit uh, the bottom, um, more or likely, we're probably going to have to have some kind of capitulation. We talked about the tick index at the beginning of the show. Probably still haven't seen anything high enough to say capitulation, uh, but uh, probably going to get a bounce out of here in the next few days. That bounce is going to tell us uh, how well we do uh, going on the way back down or whether this is a bottom or not. My guess is that we broke through enough levels that the bounce we have will probably be uh, Semi week, and we've opened up uh, 1225 in the marketplace. So maybe we get back up to 1310, uh, 1315 on the SP, see the uh, same kind of thing. But uh, right now, uh, not enough of these stocks closing back above these previous lows, even though they're on lighter volume, uh, like we're watching in Sandisk here, where it's been bleeding. Uh, well, down to what, uh, almost $31 from this 31 I uh, see Tom O'Brien back from his mini vacation, rested with his little flaming uh, shirt on today. So he'll be uh, in about 10 minutes to wrap up the end of the day. I uh, have to hear what he thinks about how gold did on Friday. Be a great, uh, great educational discussion. We'll see you again on Wednesday.